A person who loses hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has automatically worshipped shaitan because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَن يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَيُرِيدُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الشَّهَوَاتِ أَن تَمِيلُوا مَيْلًا عَظِيمًا Allah wants to forgive everyone. Allah wants to forgive you, He says. May He forgive us all. And He says, those who are astray, they want to turn a complete turning. And shaitan makes people lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we really feel the closeness of Allah. And may we really get closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the days pass. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us, don't be envious of what we've given other people. Don't be jealous of what we've given other people. What can a person be jealous of? There is a lot. But Allah makes mention of three things. He says, wealth, people become jealous of wealth. Someone has got a lot. Allah is the one who's given. When a person becomes jealous of someone else, they are questioning Allah's decree. Allah says, I want to give them so much. He's the one who decides how to distribute whatever he wants to distribute. And we say, no, Ya Allah, why did you give that person? It means, Ya Allah, I disagree with your distribution. Na'udhu Billah. May Allah protect us. We shouldn't be thinking that way. Be happy for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمْ يَحْسُدُونَ النَّاسَ عَلَى مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِن فَضْلِهِ Speaking about certain people, Allah says, are they jealous? Regarding what virtue we have bestowed upon some others. Allah says, wait, there is wealth, there is knowledge, and there is wisdom. Sometimes people become jealous of knowledge. Someone's been granted a little bit more, and others become jealous to say, well, that person doesn't know anything, you know. That is what shaitan did. Adam alayhi salatu was was given a virtue, and shaitan said, no ways, that, pe- that person is lower than me. I will never ever bow down to that virtue. So that is the quality of shaitan, that pride, that jealousy, that arrogance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't be jealous neither of the wealth, nor of the knowledge, nor of the wisdom. Sometimes a person is very wise, they know how to speak. When we don't know how to speak to others and we become jealous, why is that person getting away with everything all the time? No, we need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, increase them and give me a little bit as well. فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا Allah says the family of Ibrahim, we gave them everything you can think of. They had kingdom, they had knowledge of the book, and they also had lots of wisdom. Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us even a little bit of that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّ do not become envious of what we have granted in terms of virtue for some of you above the others. Don't become envious of it. Especially when it comes to the laws of inheritance mentioned here, a woman must not say, no, why did I get so little and why did he get much? No. Remember, if you go through these verses, you will see that in the case where a woman does not have an equal male relative who's there to look after her after the death of that particular deceased person, meaning after the death that has occurred, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives her half of the wealth or sometimes two-thirds if there are more than one. Amazing. Let's go through the verses and we will come through the secrets of the Quran and the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So rather than objecting it, we'd rather learn it from sources that really we will feel thereafter that no, we've learned something. In the, alhamdulillah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us, you know what? Be just. Stand up for justice. Because obviously, if you would like to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to be just. And as we said in the Quran, and I'm sure every Friday we hear the verse, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani. Allah commands and instructs us to uplift and uphold justice at all times, and then goodness. Why justice and then goodness? Because sometimes a person says, nah, never mind, just leave them, it's alright. But what do you mean? It's my right. And they are trampling all over me. So they say, no, just be good. Don't worry, forgive them. Forget about it. Forgive, forget. Forgiveness and forgetting has a limit to it. At times, we need to be just. And we need to serve justice. So that people do not get away with murder. Just because they will then feel, don't worry, this person will forgive me and they'll forget about it. Let me trample all over them. As it is, don't you know they've forgiven this one and that one? So Allah says, first be just. Then you must know goodness will come thereafter. Do not... Try and claim to be good and pay as a payment for that justice. 
So you are giving up justice and you're saying no, claiming that I'm, go I'm good, I'm actually good. There's no goodness in giving up justice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who are just. When it comes to rulings and in these verses, and I would suggest that everyone pick up Surah An-Nisa, especially those who are married. Read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned how to solve family disputes here. And Allah does not use the term talaq in this surah. He does not use the term divorce here. He says, If the two separate, if the two decide that they want to part ways, after what? After having tried. What type of trials are mentioned in these verses? In this surah, Allah says, when there is a problem between husband and wife, the two must sit together firstly. They must discuss the problems. They must come to a solution, not based on what she wants, not based on what he wants. Based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. If the two cannot come to a solution, then they must involve senior family members from either side. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبَعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيدَا إِصْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا Allah says, when there is fear of a split, then each one should appoint a senior member of the family on his or her side, and if they really intend to solve the problem, Allah will bring them together. But what is the problem with us? When we have arbitration, each one wants to prove I was right, that one was wrong. So I was always right. Forget about who was right and wrong. Learn when it comes to husband and wife, learn to forgive and forget, inshallah. And learn not to bring up the past. The minute the past is brought up, we are destroying whatever we've built and whatever we are planning for the future. So what happens sometimes you have a one hour, two hour arbitration and people have forgiven and forgotten and as they're walking out, the wife says, you see, I told you it was me who was right. Everything is finished. Then the screaming starts, the shouting starts once again and everything. We should not go in with the intention of proving who was right and wrong. Allah says, in yurida islahan. If your intention is islah and rectification, you'll come out with solutions and results. But when your intention is to prove who was right and wrong, you will prove who was right and wrong, but you won't come together in marriage. May Allah protect us all. So that's the solution mentioned in Surah An-Nisa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that if you've tried that, you've brought the parties together, you've tried the various means of pressurizing either side into coming to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then still you find that that is impossible, then what you've got to do, then you separate in goodness. You don't keep a woman hanging as we mentioned. It is also in this particular surah again. If it is going to work, it's going to work. If it's not going to work, release her with goodness. That is why it is reported that Ali radiallahu anhu has said, زوج ابنتك تقيا إن أحبها أكرمها وإن أبغضها لم يظلمها Get your daughters married to those who are fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they love them, they will honor them. And if they dislike them, at least they won't oppress them. They'll send them home in one piece. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding that when a divorce occurs, don't become too bitter about it. It has happened. It's not the first divorce. Nor is it the last divorce. Don't become too bitter. Understand, if that girl has come back home in one piece without being oppressed, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our daughter is back home. It might not be the ideal situation, but at least she was not beaten till her bones broke. And remember, wife bashing is haram. Here in these verses, the issue of the beating is mentioned in these verses, but the understanding is not my understanding, nor is it yours. The understanding of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. That does not mean right. The Quran has told me I'm allowed to bash a woman, bring my baseball bat, let me better. No, that is absolutely haram. Do you know that a marriage can be nullified by the group of ulama if a husband has bashed his wife? If that was permissible, why then would it be allowed to nullify the marriage just through him having beaten her? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So those people who are going around saying the Quran allows a man to beat a woman, they don't know what they're talking about. The Quran says that when as a last resort, a woman is not listening and she does not want to look at you when you are talking to her, you may draw her attention by tapping her. That is the term. Darb does not necessarily mean to go out and beat and thump and thud. If that was the case, we would have read so many ahadith of the Sahaba having done that. Radiallahu anhum. They didn't do that. But when we read the ahadith, they used a siwak. Do you know what is a siwak? A small stick which is used to clean the teeth compared to the baseball bats that we are using today. 
a small stick that is used to clean the teeth that was only used to draw the attention of the women that was how they understood wadribu hunna that is how they understood it so why should we then try and say no the quran doesn't have that verse when we go and speak to those modernists and those people who want to now delete verse of the quran don't deny it say look the understanding is the understanding of the sahaba and also over and above that a woman who's been bashed you have the right to apply to the ulama to the bodies to the ulama authorities in the muslim countries to the courts and that marriage will be nullified on those grounds if it was permissible how could it have been nullified so let's understand the sharia that holds in and there is nothing barbaric that, that is law so allah ta'ala then speaks about le- learning the quran understanding the quran why don't they want to understand the verses of the Quran? The Mufassirin have said from here that it is farad upon every Muslim to do his or her best to try and understand what the Quran is saying. We need to pick this Quran up and learn it. And we need to understand the verses of the Quran. It's farad on me and farad on you to do that. And that is why we are seated here solely to listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in this Quran. So Allah says, do you know that if this book was revealed by anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would find in it a lot of contradiction. But there is no contradiction in the Quran. May Allah make us strong so that we can actually learn this Quran and we can understand it and we can practice upon it and we can teach it to others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that speaks about the hypocrites and we know the qualities of the hypocrites. And Allah says, it's amazing how people can actually befriend hypocrites. It's amazing how people can befriend hypocrites and people can say, no, don't worry, never mind. It's okay. They are lights. It's okay. When a person clearly starts objecting the Quran and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they are claiming to be Muslim. If they are non-Muslim, it's another issue. But when they are claiming to be Muslim, they become very, very, very dangerous. So therefore, we should not befriend such people. We should try and help them and assist them. And we should make dua for them as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Right at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of two issues. The first is he says, you know the secret meetings you have? Those secret meetings, they are of no goodness unless there is some form of positiveness that is coming out of it. There is no goodness in those secret meetings that the people hold unless in it they are ordering, commanding good, commanding charity and solving problems between people. A lot of times when we have clandestine meetings, it is in order to backbite, in order to deceive, in order to plan and plot the downfall of someone. As Muslims, that shouldn't be the case. When we speak behind people's backs, it should be good. When we speak in front of them, we must be candid and straightforward. May Allah make us from amongst those. Then Allah says, warning us all, telling us, listen, I don't need you, you need me. So many of us, we know that actually. So many of us are guilty of forgetting that. Listen very carefully, Allah is saying. If He wants, He can replace you with other people. He can cause your complete destruction and replace you with some others who will then worship Him. So don't think you are doing a favor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by standing in taraweeh, by fasting. We are doing ourselves a favor. Really, we are helping ourselves and inshallah, we ask Allah to accept it from us. Allah is showing us His independence and He is telling us, if I want, I can destroy you and replace you with others. That is not difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May He not do that to us. May we be from amongst those who are grateful at all times and may we be from amongst those who can use this month of Ramadan to change and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be happy at the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallah bihamdih subhanakallahum wa bihamdika nashiru an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayki Thank you so much for listening to this short message I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته